With the world still in shock over the massive floods in China's central province of Henan, the Communist Party's top leader, Xi Jinping, has chosen to visit Tibet from afar. According to German water expert Wang Wei Liu and well-known overseas Chinese expert and YouTuber Jiang Feng, Xi's trip was for the sake of Tibet's reservoirs and dams. Although the official Chinese media continues to emphasize that the flooding in Zhengzhou was due to heavy precipitation, which was unprecedented in over a hundred years, many analysts and water experts believe that the main reason for the tragedy was because of the secret emergency discharge of the Changzhuang Reservoir, located about two kilometers away from downtown Zhengzhou. On July 20, the floodwater was released without any government warning or notice. China has more than 90,000 reservoirs. They are like basins of water over the heads of the Chinese people, ready to pour down huge flood water at any time. If that is the condition for the Chinese, what do these reservoirs in China mean to the surrounding countries? Over the past 70 years, the armed forces units in Tibet have resolutely implemented the decisions and arrangements of the CPC Central Committee, and the Central Military Commission have taken root in the snowy plateau to guard China's border regions with loyalty, and have successfully fulfilled a series of important missions. You have withstood the tests of the difficult environment and complex struggles and made outstanding contributions to safeguarding national security and unity, as well as promoting stability and development in Tibet. Tibet shares a border with India. Since 2020, the border conflict between China and India has escalated, along with the changing relationship between China and the US, and India's growing tendency to align itself with the US and actively participate in Asia-Pacific affairs. The capital of Tibet is Lhasa, and according to tradition, the top leader's first stop is usually Lhasa. But on the morning of July 21, she flew in and first arrived in Linqi, Main Ling Airport. He then rode a vehicle to the Niyang River Bridge. Chinese media reported that Xi Jinping learned about the ecological and environmental protection of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River in the Niyang River Basin. <laughs> He spent the first day and a half after his arrival in the Tibetan city of Linqi. It was only in the afternoon of July 22 that she moved to Lhasa, the capital of Tibet. Why was Xi Jinping's first stop in Linqi instead of Lhasa? It is most likely due to the strategic location of Linqi, as it is located in the southern part of Tibet, a disputed area between China and India, with Bhutan to the west and Myanmar to the east. In reality, India controls almost the entire southern part of Tibet. The Yarlung Zhangbo River is the steepest river in China. It is 2,057 kilometers long in Tibetan territory and is divided into three sections, upper, middle, and lower. The Yarlung Tibet River Basin contains the border area of the Sino-Indian Sovereignty Dispute, also known as the Tibetan Southern Region in China. China and India have had disputes over the sharing of hydrological data and the construction of dams. The delta of the Niyang River, a tributary of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River, about 40 kilometers upstream of the Grand Canyon Bend, is home to an important town in the southern Tibetan region, Ba Yi, a site of great economic and military importance. It is here that Xi Jinping lectures his subordinates. In order to safeguard this critical military town, China plans to build a large hydroelectric power station, the Mo Tua Dam. It has been included in the published plan of the Chinese Communist government and is also known as the Yarlong Tsiangpo River Big Bend Hydroelectric Power Station. The dam is supposed to have 2.5 to 3 times the installed capacity of the Three Gorges Dam. The site of the dam is Linqi, the first stop of Xi Jinping's visit. 
The construction of this project will allow for complete strategic control of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River's water resources. Once the CCP controls the security of the waters of the southern Tibetan region, India will stand to lose control of this territory along with people's livelihood in the area. Wang Wei Liu, the Chinese water expert, speculated that the final decision to build one or two dams at the Muay Thai hydropower station has not yet been made. If two dams are built, one will be at the upper reaches of the Nyang River at the mouth of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River, and the other at the lower reaches of the Nyang River at the mouth of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River, with the aim of not flooding the town of Ba Yi. The section of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River that flows into India is called the Brahmaputra River. Some Indian media have expressed doubts that China's construction of hydropower stations upstream is a significant threat, bringing floods and mudslides to India and affecting the ecology and water resources of the region. Moreover, in the event of a conflict between India and China, China may also intercept the river flow to hold India back. China has built the Zhangmu hydropower station on the Yarlung Tsiangpo River. A series of five hydropower stations have been built in a short distance of 38.5 kilometers. In addition to these five dams, there are three other dams in other sections along the river. In other words, there are eight dams in the middle reaches of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River. In November 2014, the Zhangmu hydroelectric power station, which took nearly eight years to build, with a total investment of RMB 9.6 billion, or US 1.48 billion, was officially put into operation. When it was under construction, it had already attracted much attention from India and Bangladesh downstream. The CCP has taken a very clever approach to the construction of hydroelectric power stations on essential rivers. It promotes them in the name of environmental and ecological concerns and as part of China's efforts to reduce emissions in response to climate change. If India opposes the dam, the current U.S. government may choose to give in to the CCP and restrain India, given how much importance the current U.S. government places on global climate strategy. In the 70-year history of the CCP's rule over China, the CCP leaders would choose to wage war against foreign countries whenever there are major social conflicts within. It serves as a way to shift the public's attention to exploit the confusion among many Chinese who are unable to tell the difference between the CCP and China, to provoke and exploit the public's patriotic fervor to shift the public's discontent towards the CCP to hatred of the warring countries and to diffuse the public's anger. Meanwhile, the party leaders can take advantage of the local wars to establish the dictator's control over military power and supreme authority. Following this pattern, the border between China and India is in great danger of war. On the morning of July 22, Xi Jinping came to the Linqi Railway Station to learn about the planning and construction and operation of the Sichuan Tibet Railway and later traveled by train to Lhasa City to inspect Lhasa and the area along the Linqi Railway. In the afternoon, Xi Jinping arrived in Lhasa. If it is to solve the transportation problem between Tibet and inland China, a railroad has already been built from Tibet to Qinghai Province. However, it cannot handle the role of resource amalgamation and strategic coordination during wartime. In the event of a war between China and India, India would have an advantage in transportation. India ascends from the Great Plains to the mountains, while China must climb to the highlands and mountains. In contrast, the Sichuan Tibet Railway would provide a military advantage. The Sichuan Tibet Railway runs from the heart of China's southwestern province of Sichuan with a population of more than 100 million and whose capital, Chengdu, is China's most important base for military production and technology. 
The Sichuan Tibet Railway, which has been under construction since 2014 and has not yet been completed, runs through the Hangduan Mountains and the highlands of the southeastern Tibet high mountain valleys. In terms of railroad engineering construction, it is one of the riskiest railroad construction projects in the world. Yet, it is scheduled to be fully operational by 2022. So why the urgency of such a massive and formidable project? The truth is that the CCP places great importance on the strategic significance of building dams on rivers. Its zest to build such dams is beyond the imagination of many countries. On July 19, the U.S. Department of Justice released an indictment accusing four Chinese nationals of collaborating with China's Ministry of State Security in a global hacking operation against dozens of companies, universities, and government agencies in the U.S. and abroad between 2011 and 2018. According to the indictment, one of the hackers targeted Ministry A of the Cambodian government, from which they stole data on discussions between China, the CCP, and the Cambodian government regarding the right to use the Mekong River in January 2018. Two sources with direct knowledge of the indictment told Reuters that Ministry A refers to the Cambodian Foreign Ministry. Cambodia is an ally of Beijing in Asia. According to the indictment released on July 19, Cambodia hosted the Communist Party-backed Lanxiang Mekong Cooperation Leader Summit in Phnom Penh on January 10, 2018, along with China, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam. On the same day, Chinese Communist hackers stole data from the Cambodian government. The Mekong River is 4,350 kilometers long and is known as the Lanxiang River in its upper reaches flowing from China along the borders of Myanmar, Laos, and Thailand, through Cambodia and Vietnam, it is one of the world's busiest navigable river stretches. For thousands of years, the Mekong River has been the lifeblood of these Southeast Asian countries, supporting the region's agriculture and fishing industries and providing livelihoods for nearly 200 million people living there. China built the first dams on the Upper Mekong in the 1990s. According to a study, at least 11 dams have been built along the river. China also plans to build more dams for power generation. A 2020 study by Eyes on Earth, a research and consulting firm, found that China's dams have intercepted large amounts of water from the upper Mekong River, exasperating the severe drought suffered by Southeast Asian countries downstream and affecting their livelihoods. Some dams have exasperated changes in the river's natural flow, resulting in minimum water levels for much of the year in the lower Mekong. The indictment mentioned that the hackers obtained data relevant to the LMC discussions, but did not elaborate. The indictment also said the hackers, on the same day of hacking, hid trade secrets and proprietary hydroacoustic data in digital images of the former U.S. president and a koala bear, sending them to an online account controlled by the hackers. It is unclear whether the hydroacoustic data collected by sonar and used to monitor underwater features belong to the Mekong region. Reuters sent separate requests for comment to the Chinese and Cambodian foreign ministries. A spokesman for the Cambodian foreign ministry referred questions to the Ministry of Telecommunications, which declined to comment. Cambodian government spokesman Pei Siphon declined to comment. The Chinese Foreign Ministry responded to Reuters' questions in the same manner as usual. It said, the allegations were unfounded. <laughs>